On this edition of Check 6 Aviation, we're building the Vans Aircraft Light Box. Welcome back to Check 6 Aviation, my friend. Today is the day as promised in the previous video. If you haven't watched the previous video, then you can see it right up there. And, uh, or is it? No, wait a minute. It, it's there or there, one of the two. I, I don't remember which. Uh, I think I'm supposed to point this way. But anyway, um, <laughs> go, go see it. It, it's the final step of building this workshop that I've built. Uh, but today is the day that we build the light box, which is a practice kit. It's one of the many practice kits that Vans Aircraft has to prepare you to help you perfect the skills that you may have only seen a YouTube University classroom presentation about, or perhaps more important that you do this you have taken the extra step of actually going to an, EA, an EAA, Experimental Aircraft Association, Sport Air Workshop, preferably starting off with the sheet metal basics. Uh, there's other YouTube channels out there that cover this, but there's no substitution for live, in-person classroom teaching where you can ask questions on the fly. You can get instant feedback of your work. I took the Sport Air Workshop at Oshkosh, Wisconsin, uh, just before the, the, the Air Venture uh, convention that we have every year, a couple of years ago back in 2020, and let me tell you, it was invaluable. Uh, so much so that I went ahead and had attempted the Vans Aircraft Toolbox on my own prior to that. It did not look very pretty. I've recently re-attempted it and actually completed. And let me tell you, it looks absolutely awesome, magnificent. Uh, I've shown this to some of the other members of my EAA chapter. And they said, yeah, it, I, I deemed that airworthy. So I, I, kind of, I kind of got the joke and, and really appreciated the comments. But anyway, this is all about the light box. So let's get into it. This is how it comes. You see up in the, yeah, the overhead camera that this view here, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead and blur that out. But, uh, even, no, I tell you what, I'll just go ahead and I probably should have done this beforehand, but <laughs> oops, or I'll just edit that out. And then we'll go ahead and unbox this and start putting it together. And I may do some, some sped up, you know, some uh, time lapse uh, video on this just because some of the work does get a little monotonous, but either way, it's getting done. So let's get to it. When you can't find, or when you don't remember what you did with your your blade, you kind of improvise. Or you get something that's really meant for it. So let me tell you, Vans creating department, packaging department, they do a very good job. As you can see, kind of tilt this down. As you can see, there's lots of paper. Uh, this is packing list, no doubt. Uh, invoice, put that off to the side.
this is a lot like what you'll see when you get your kit. By the way, if you choose to order any of the Vans aircraft and start building, my builder number is down in the bottom of the comments. Include my builder number when you get yeah, on the How Did You Hear About Us form, and Vans Aircraft will send me $100 thank you, and it doesn't cost you a dime. And it's a way to support the channel. Another way to support the channel is to smash that like button. Also, yeah, if you haven't subscribed already, please do. And be sure to hit that notification bell to set all to all so you don't miss any videos that I put out. And by the way, share this video with your favorite app geek. So here we go. They've got I've got this kind of backwards. Well, I can go ahead and I would say that they would that they put this on the wrong side, but I can go ahead and maybe use some um, some uh, cleaning some cleaning solution and get the lettering off. Uh, or, well, yeah, no, I I definitely will will do that because I do have I did try this one more time one previous time and it too didn't turn out very well but the, the lettering was on the opposite side. As a matter of fact, I don't remember there being any lettering on this gauge of aluminum. So we'll go ahead and get that taken care of and maybe polish it up, I don't know. But everything is here, it looks like. We've got the top and bottom. I have the the back. I have the front. I have the two sides. The attachment pieces. And the hardware bag. Which has the two sides in it. this oh this is the this is the lights that's the lights and these are the sides so boom and I'm recording Hi, YouTube. so we have the power pack because you gotta have power Light box? Yes, this is the light box. We have rivets and nut plates and grommet. I do have extras. And then last but not least, the instructions. And the one thing I do like about the about the light box is that there's different ways that you can build this. You can build this to where the, the back is removable or you can just put the front as removable. Um, I'm actually going to hang this on the wall. There is no way to really hang this on the wall as is. So I'll go ahead and measure the place to put it, you know, place to put the, the screw holes and kind of drill out a, a little hole with a little eyelet to, you know, like you would see on something that would hang, you'd hang a, you'd something on the wall, um, like a picture frame or something like that. So let's get into it. After I unboxed everything, I did notice that I had a couple of corners that were bent up. So this is what I'm doing here. I'm going ahead and reshaping those corners. And now deburring is always a step that is called for in the plans. Um, not so much of a concern on the edges with today's technology from Vans when they go ahead and cut these pieces out uh, with, their with the machinery that they have, um, but it is always a good idea to kind of put a rounding on them, so on, on the edges, so that you don't 
have any any cuts when working with the metal and yes metal will cut now if I had known early on that denatured alcohol or even rubbing alcohol would take off the lettering I would have not scuffed up the front face of this light box but it still came out looking very good you'll see it here in a little bit at the yeah you know, towards the end of this video and so therefore yeah it is what it is Now one of the things that you have to deal with in any airplane build, and this is no exception, is nut plates. And here I had to go ahead and dimple all of the nut plates so that they can sit flush. And if I had to do this step all over again, I probably would have waited to install them until after the um, the, the rails that they go on were already installed uh, because the, the simple fact is that the there's a little round area where the screw goes through as a matter of fact that's where the threads of the screw you know, cling on to and hold on to um, that little round area tends to get in the way of the pneumatic squeezer when I am uh, trying to rivet the other you know the, the rivets that are going or that are holding the rails onto the part that they go on so what I would have done is yes dimple the you know, the the nut plates and also the areas of the rail that that they go onto but I would not have uh, riveted the nut plates on until after the rail itself had been installed because well once again it's all about trying to make things a little bit easier for yourself. Speaking of easier, you saw me doing uh, rounding off the corners there on the, uh, it's not really a grinding wheel, it is a 3M deburring wheel that I have installed on one, of, one end of my bench grinder. Let me tell you, that thing works like a charm. So there's this little black thing, this little black strip that you see me picking up and putting down. That's a rivet size checker. So basically, there's a certain uh, when you squeeze down the rivet, it, it gets a little bit larger. Um, as a matter of fact, it gets a lot larger. So there's for the, the the size of rivet that you're using, there's a certain circumference that that rivet should get to. If it's over that circumference, then it's over squeezed and should be drilled out and re riveted. Uh, but if it's under squeezed, it can, you know, your pneumatic squeezer or whatever method of squeezing the rivet that you're using can be, uh, can be adjusted and you can, it, it's not necessarily recommended, but you can squeeze it a little bit further. Um, so, but after a while though, I got it to a point where I was pretty confident that my rivet my pneumatic squeezer was set right and I didn't feel the need to check my rivets as much now when every time every time I change the settings on my squeezer I definitely will under squeeze initially and then dial those rivets in a bit more until I don't need to uh, to check them every time And here we have the nut plates going on. I do have 
two different piles of rivets. There's two different styles of rivets. There's the AN 426s. Those are the ones that sit flush inside of a dimpled hole. And then there's the AN 470s. Those are the round head rivets. And those are primarily used on places that don't require a smooth airflow going over them because that would disrupt the airflow. So you find that the 470s are primarily used on interior surfaces, uh, interior parts that are inside the airplane or inside uh, the control surfaces, such as uh, spar caps or you know, spar webs or something like that, uh, or even ribs, for example. Um, I did not take the additional step of doing the, you know, the you know, separating them before I started, but I did also want to do um, flush riveting. I wanted to do some uh, some um, uh, countersinking on the front plate, and that is what I am doing here. Now normally, and I don't know why they didn't do this here, but normally Vans parts ship with a blue vinyl to protect the aluminum parts. That didn't happen here, obviously. And that made going ahead and getting the labels off of the parts a little bit more challenging because normally the labels are right over that blue vinyl and all you have to do to get the label off is just peel that vinyl right off. Now, I will say this, from experience, the longer the vinyl sits on the part, the more challenging it is to get off. It will come off, but it's just one of those things that the vinyl just likes to stick better over time. If it's brand new vinyl, if it's a brand new part that Vans just shipped out, you won't have any problem with it. Um, here, I had problems with getting the stickers off and decided to go ahead and just go ahead and just blast it with the one inch wheel. Now this is about the time that I decided to break out the back rivet set and let me tell you I have back riveted before back when I took the sport air workshop a couple years ago and I did okay this time though eh, not so much I goobered up a rivet uh, now it turns out that I in the process of storing tools as I was acquiring them before the workshop was ready. Um, I am missing a few a few pieces. Uh, I don't know what happened to them. Um, we'll go ahead and find out where they are. Uh, specifically my 12 inch offset uh, back rivet uh, back rivet thing, uh, uh, piece for my rivet gun. Uh, I'm missing that but uh, let me tell you, it didn't work out so well. I ended up drilling out the rivet as you saw, and uh, the, the drill out didn't go as planned. And so I ended up using a pull rivet.
So the front cover is now on and it's time to rivet it in place. And this is where I learn a valuable lesson about making sure that your rivet gun is firmly on the, on the rivet that you are going to be working on. Because bam, it slipped off and just like that, I've got a dent. Thankfully, it is on the top where it is not going to be seen because this is going to be hung from my the towards the ceiling of my workshop. So this is the first time I'm actually trying to create a video with a couple of different views. And I think it's gone really well, but I want to know what you think. Do you like this style of video making? Should I use this more often going forward? Or do you like one certain camera viewpoint? Leave a comment down below and let me know. Because after all, unlike my wife, I am not a mind reader. So you saw me checking the instructions a while ago and this is where I get to use my unibit drill bit for the very first time because you have to first drill a hole and then step it up to fit the grommet there. So it is day two of the Vans Aircraft Lightbox build and I got to the point kind of late last night in the build where it said take some heat shrink which I didn't have to the to the wires because this is how they come and so therefore I had to go ahead and kind of put the you know go to bed and spend some time with the family not that I really didn't want to spend some time with the family, but I had to wait till today either way after church 
to go ahead and go to Lowe's and get some heat shrink. So we're going to continue this today and finish it off in today. But if you happen to have all of the pro all of the things on hand when you start this, yes, this project can be done in a single day. So back to work. Now, one thing I did notice that when I took the lights off of the reel last night is that there was nothing to connect the lights up to the power connector. Uh, what I ended up having to do was salvage, well, cannibalize the power connector from the previous light box that I had attempted. And here, it's a good thing that I did have to go to Lowe's because I did not have a soldering iron even. So I did pick one up and here I am working on connecting up the uh, the connector up to the light the lights there um, trying to solder them together um, did not work out very well initially at least not with the naked eye until I brought out the uh, the the lens there you know the the magnifying glass that I installed and figured out that hey you know what um, go ahead and use the box the light box itself is kind of uh, an aid. Um, what I ended up doing was, as you see here, using the you know, the box as kind of a prop for the iron itself. Now, if I had to do it all over again, I probably would have uh, ponied up and gotten some different solder instead of the solder that came with the uh, the soldering iron, uh, because it had a lot it probably would have had a lot more flux than than the solder that i had you know, that came with it um, di a neighbor did stop by and uh, i enlisted his help uh, that's the the third hand that you saw in the frame there as we go ahead and get this all taken care of um, the shrink wrap though did kind of uh, activate and kind of make things a little bit difficult uh, as you see right there. Um, oh, and uh, definitely have some steel wool when you're using a soldering iron because the the heat will melt the one inch wheels. I did want to touch up here and there for, uh, with the isopropyl alcohol, the rubbing alcohol, to clean off the inside as I wound the, the light, the LEDs, all the way around the inside of the, uh, of the light box. Um, let me tell you, there's enough LED strips, a uh, strip of an LED where you'll make at least three, almost three complete uh, turns around and when you're done all you have to do is take some you know, take some uh, uh, shrink wrap and put it right over the ends or you if you don't have any shrink wrap you can even use tape the instructions say I chose to do the shrink the shrink wrap because well it just looked like a more professional appearance and I did test the lights and, and they work but here's a quick shot of them working completely in the dark. Lights out.
All right, and there you have it, folks. That is the Vans Aircraft light box. It, it, it all worked out. It's there. It's decorative. It looks great. That's it. Now, for the next video, I'm torn. Should I... See, I, I have these... I have these... Uh, these other practice kits. I have... This is the, the airfoil kit. I have two of them. I want to do one and then that way I have something to show how it was how it goes together, how it's supposed to look. At least I hope how it's supposed to look. Uh, and then if I do a video, then do this one in the video. Or I just might I don't know. I, I, I just might do them and the next video will be jump we'll jump straight into building the RV10. What are your thoughts? Give me a comment down below and by the way, give me a like, uh, subscribe if you haven't already. It really does help the channel. It's an absolutely free way to support my channel and help it grow. Likes and subscribes, especially the, the subscribes uh, help grow the channel. The likes tell the YouTube algorithm that this channel is really liked and should be shared and suggested among people that like the con that like, like airplanes, for example, aviation content. So I appreciate you watching. That's it for this video. Check out another one of our other playlists. Uh, the, if you've missed the playlist for how, to, how we got to this point, then check it out over here and uh, have a great day. And always remember, check your six. Peace.